I got a surprise chat from one of our subscribers. So he is in class 12th, very young guy. And he WhatsApped me saying that, sir, how can I make a career in aging research if I want to get started now? I laughed at it and I said, uh, you are still in class 12. How can you, how do you get all these ideas? And he said, sir, I don't want to make a career in medicine. I want to make a career in something which helps humanity. And uh, I believe if I can stop my parents from aging by 1% also, that's a great achievement. Well, that's something to be thought about. But that is where I said, okay, give me a day's time. I'll make a video on this and give you. So this video is in response to that chat and of course for all of you who want to make a career in aging research. Now my apologies for the background cracker bursting because I'm making it just next day to Diwali which is a festival in India where people burst crackers out of happiness. Okay, so start, let's start with the first point here. If you are a 10 plus 2 student which is a you know um, prerequisite to make a career in research in biology. So of course you need to have a solid foundation of human biology. Why this is so important and even I have seen um, four or five people commenting under my videos earlier also that they want to make a career in aging research. Why this is important is because even if your research can increase the age of huma humans by 1% also, you are in billions, your research will get you a Nobel Prize. And you will be a celebrity bigger than Shah Rukh Khan in India. For example, that uh, semiglutide, which is now um, reducing the weight, you know, weight loss uh, drug. So it's on fire, right, in US. The same thing here. If you are able to somehow reduce or increase the uh, lifespan of humans by 1% also, we have a business. Well, how to get there? That's a question to be asked. So to be very frank, all you need is a very strong foundation of human physiology. And that you can do by doing your undergraduate degree in, uh, so the graduation in um, biology, any biology, zoology, uh, human physiology, or uh, bachelor's in pharmacy, or just a simple biotech degree, BSc biotechnology will also do. You can probably do more specialization later, but if you want to do specialization in the bachelor's itself, then you can always go for neurobiology, gerontology, or biochemistry, or molecular biology. But yeah, I will not suggest that. I will still suggest you that go for the broader degrees, which is biotechnology or bachelor's in pharmacy, and later on specialize, okay? So that in case you you lose interest or maybe you feel that some other field is bigger, then you can always switch. So that's one precaution I want to tell you. Now the next step will be post-graduation. So obviously post-graduation you can do a bit into specialization, which is biochemistry, molecular biology, gerontology, uh, uh, neurobiology, uh, things like that. And uh, you can then go for your PhD. Now in PhD, before you go for PhD, you should gain some experience. Now you will be like, which all places I can gain experience? See, as a master student, nobody will give you any um, place. So you'll have to volunteer. You'll have to volunteer in organizations like TIFR, IAC, uh, and um, various other labs where uh, aging research is going on. So you'll have to do, do volunteer and you can always work there. Now, apart from that, you can always apply for internships and fellowships and um, specialized for these programs and there is only one website and app in the entire world which can help you here and that is Biotechnica. So you, if you have a Biotechnica website subscription, you will be informed about any uh, upcoming aging research projects which is going to come up and you can always apply. So you have to keep your eyes open and of course Biotechnica's newsletter open every day. Now, the question to be asked is, okay, I have done that. Now what is the next? See, you apply and you expect people to give you a research project that doesn't happen. You have to network, you have to reach out to people, you have to be in their LinkedIn profile, you know, interact with them on a daily basis, especially those who are in aging. So you can probably go to LinkedIn, search aging research, find out the professionals who are doing research on aging and follow them and look for what kind of uh, things you they're posting. Maybe they post some kind of uh, job you can see, then you can, you know, double down on that. So that's how you do it. You can always join some professional organizations on gerontology. Um, there are various uh, organizations, you can Google it out, you can do that. Now followed by that, of course, uh, you have to do a lot of skill development, molecular biology techniques, because when you are talking about aging research, you will also be talking about 
uh, genetics and the impact of genetics on aging. So uh, you will be also uh, supposed to, you're also supposed to know the, um, the genetic side of it. Even uh, if you have knowledge of coding and uh, bioinformatics, even that will be helpful. So these, these are the broader sense things you should require. Most important thing about any research field is staying informed because the opportunities just come and evaporate. Like it will come, it will be there for the next uh, 6 hours to 12 hours and then it will get filled. So you have to keep updating yourself, stay informed. And that you can do by subscribing to Biotechnic on various social media platforms. Now coming to the question that which are the research institutions across the globe and India who are doing research on aging which you should follow. And that is TAFR, Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai. Then Indian Institute of Science, uh, which is in Bangalore. Then you have All India Institute of Medical Sciences, AIMS in New Delhi. And then you have Jawaharlal Nehru University, which is in uh, Delhi again. So these are in India. Now let's talk about abroad. Now if I, look, if I look at abroad, you have National Institute of Aging, NIA in USA. Then in Germany, you have Max Planck Institute of Biology and of Aging. So you can apply there. Buck Institute of Research in Aging, again USA, and then Institute of Aging Research, Harvard Medical School, USA. These are the four in across the globe which you can apply for. Now the question is which are the companies? So okay, you have done your research in aging, which are the companies who will hire you or who, whom you should follow and you know stay updated. So number one will be Calico Life Sciences in US. Uh, they're a Google founded research uh, and development company focused on uh, understanding and combating aging and age related diseases. The next will be Novartis, Switzerland. Then you have uh, GlaxoSmithKline, that is GSK UK, Biogen USA, uh, Regenron Pharmaceuticals, you can follow them. Uh, Unity Biotechnology, even you can apply there also after your PhD probably you can do that. In Silico Medicine, which is in Hong Kong as well as in USA. Then you have Elysium Health, uh, which is in USA. Sierra Sciences, again USA, and Altos Labs, USA. Now, across the globe, billions of dollars are being put in into aging research and there is a reason behind it. What seems fiction today will be possible tomorrow. What seems impossible today will be piece of cake tomorrow. You just look at it. 200 years ago, flying was a dream. Today it is possible. Today people are flying to a space station in, uh, uh, you know, in space. So yeah, that's possible. So what seems like impossible will be possible. All you have to do is combine three or four sciences. Now what are the sciences we are talking about? Of Obviously your basic knowledge of molecular biology, genetics, uh, bioinformatics, coding and uh, gerontology, neurobiology. And then uh, you need to develop your own specific uh, a reputation by publishing papers, attending conferences, uh, networking with people, uh, getting your PhD from the right place and then obviously following Biotechnica because that's where everything else will be posted. Now what I feel is this video should serve as the, just the beginning of your uh, aging research career. This is not the everything of aging research career. There is much more to be done. There is so much more which can be done in India as well as abroad. And um, you know why people will be interested in that is definitely the billionaires would love to increase their age by 1% if they can. Of course, uh, exercise and all the natural things are always there. But what if science could augment this by 1% also? And if you can be that catalyst, you are going to ha have a billion dollar company in the future or probably working for a billion dollar tr or trillion dollar company in the future. So that's a big, big, big opportunity for you. So don't think that aging research is just uh, a fad. It's not just a buzzword. It is a real thing. It's going to be there everywhere tomorrow in the future. So all the best and uh, keep shining. You, if you have any questions or comments, you can put them down in the comment section or you can write to me at shaker at biotechnica.org. Keep shining. Take care. Bye-bye.